Every morning, hundreds of stocks are gapping up or gapping down in the stock market, which can lead to some of the quickest and easiest profits you'll ever make trading. So inside this video, we're going to dissect the two morning gap scenarios, the gap and breakout and the gap and fill and how we can apply it to options to make 100% return. All I ask is you subscribe and like the video. We're going to get right into it and show you exactly how to find this, how to utilize it, and then how to apply it for options. So first off, scanning is the most important part. So the gapping in the market, this happens pre-market. So people are boosting the stock up off news, off earnings, and it's at a different price than it was yesterday. This confirms a gap and we can actually scan for it. So it's very important you wake up 20 to 30 minutes before the market opens and start making your game plan. If you wake up with no plan, you're gonna fail. So first off, here's the inputs you can put on tradingview.com to find the morning gaps within your criteria. So all I'm doing is very simple. I do pre-market gap percentage. I'm looking for something 1%, but if you want a larger gap, obviously you can increase that. I'm looking for volume at least 50K. You can increase that if you want something more sustainable. Um, low volume gaps are likely to get gap filled, which we'll talk about later. And also the price. I don't want to trade things under 10 bucks, but that's my personal criteria. Again, the only input you need is really the percentage gapping pre-market. And this is free on TradingView. You can try it out and every morning know the stocks that are running. So I'm going to give you three examples and show you how I'd utilize it, how I would trade them right when the bell went off. So here's Target post earnings. As you can see on the market mover indicator, we have a red candle. We have a red signal. Market's not open. So what I would do in this scenario is, hey, plot the levels of support and resistance because this gives me levels to play off of. If we ever hit a key level, I know to play calls or play puts or take profit or take a loss probably. So this is what I'm going to do. Plot the important levels using the resistances, which is Places we've fouled at in the past, as you can see on target, we haven't broke over 235 easily. We actually re rejected this and sold off. And then, as you can see here, this was a reasonable place of support. So another place of rejection here. So we know it's a confirmed level for multiple places. So we're looking for something that acts as a versatile support resistance level. So you can see right here, there it's support, here it's resistance, here it's support. So that's a versatile level that I think we're going to end up bouncing off of if we sold off on target. So you can see right here, this is live market action. This is when the bell actually went off and target almost came down to the exact support I drew out. So again, I'm not touching this stock, not playing it until my key levels are hit. And what you can do is right at the bell, if you're at a key level, just take puts, just take calls, and then you can see it rip right away if these next factors align. So let's go through another two examples of pre-market action and plotting pre-market levels. So here's Mara, Bitcoin's taking off, and we're seeing a pre-market gap up. You can see here, yesterday's high is being passed and we're going further and further. So what I'm gonna do is plot the resistances. Can you guess where they are? One of them is right here, that's at about 2810 and another support level, if we pull back, is probably gonna be around the gap. So if we gap and fill, that's an excellent place to see a bounce. So let's show you what that looks like on the actual market open. So you can see the 2810 level was right here. We see this being resistance, and we see the top of this being, sorry, this is resistance, and this is resistance. So two resistance levels higher. Um, this is actually support at one point, it's resistance at one point. So that's what I'm talking about is versatile levels. And we came right up to that level and sold off at the bell. So if this ever happens where you jump to a key level at the market open on a gap, that's a great place for puts. And you can see right here, Mara did not waste a dime, straight sell off from the bell right to support. So where do we draw the support? Again, key levels we bounce off of or key levels we rejected. The more times you touched it, the better off it is. So here's one key level of support and another versatile point here, key level of resistance. And you can see Mara came right down to that level and it does look like we're supporting at that key versatile level. As you can see, I did make these rectangular boxes because there's never one level of buyers and sellers. 
there's usually a range. You know, there's a range of where the pressure is. So while there's some buying pressure here, I know there's gonna be a lot typically at the gap fill. So one trading strategy is you play the stock down to the gap fill and you see Mara has room to go. So this is not over. This could have been a great trade if it continued lower and then that would have been a great entry point for the bounce and for the run later. So last example, this is Suncor Energy. This is a stock gapping to all time highs and you're probably wondering where's resistance, how do I play it? And this is a tough one. So as you can see, the market mover is orange. So that tells me it's got room to run. If it ever hits red, it's probably a sell off signal. You can see here, target opened up red, sold off right at the bell. So it's a high likelihood reversal scenario. You can see Mara here opened up orange, didn't continue. So we, we think that orange and yellow have room to run. So it's important to know how extended you are in the chart. But once we draw our key levels for Suncor, you can see this is basically over key level and we have no idea where the resistances are unless we use fibs, unless we use round dollar numbers. But all we know is that at this point, when something moves to all time highs, we wanna find the best place to get in. And all we're looking for is a move to touch the key level of support. So prior highs are gonna act as prior next support. And you can see this is touched twice. And I drew this wide box because we have a, n a bunch of resistances here, resistance, 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 resistance. So I know the bottom of the box is gonna be a likely bounce scenario as well. So there's a, a wide range I'm looking to pick this up in if it comes down. So if you want this indicator, the orange and red and yellow one that tells you bullish and bearish momentum free, 10 days, no strings attached, no credit card, no subscription. And if you wanna try it out, um, we'll get you access in 24 hours. So next up, once we have our key levels, once we have our stock, we have to figure out which way it's gonna go. So the idea is it's gonna come down, which is a gap fill if it's a breakout higher, or it's gonna run higher, which is a gap and go. So if it gaps and runs, uh, we wanna be a part of that. We wanna be a part of that continuation because it could be very strong. But it gaps and fills, we don't wanna get screwed and, and holding calls and just continuously seeing those get burned because it could be a very quick fill reversal pullback right at the open. So you wanna make sure you're very careful with what happens in the first three to five minutes. So here's what, what, what I would look for to know if it's gonna pull back or not. Number one, any indicator, mine particularly, will say overbought, which will tell you as a less likelihood chance of continuing. So you do see here the overbought conditions, and this is target, push it down all the way from 227 to 221. And at this moment, we finally normalize the indicator and we start getting some cooled off readings. And this is the one place I think we can start running from. So the key is when you pull back on a great gap, you do wanna look for great places of support. And this leads to a late day run or another gap the next day. So even though it pulled back, it's an opportunity to get into the trend still. And because it pulled back with these overbought conditions, it's also an opportunity in the morning to play this pullback. If you see it, if you see the, the overbought conditions, if you see the proper candle set up, because that is a great seven point move in 15 minutes. And it's very hard to find and only possible if you're looking at these huge gappers. This is another scenario that will tell me it's gonna gap and fill, which means come to the prior day's high or prior day's low. So low volume. So volume is very key for that morning first five minutes. If you lack it, it's gonna come down, retest those levels until buyers are interested again and until sellers are done taking profit. So you could see right here, low volume, right at the open on Mara, and then sellers just swooped. We can see that the volume was great. First candle was great and then disappeared. So we see just a tremendous drop off, a 50% less amount of volume and candles just coming straight down. So as I see this setup, you know, great volume here, but very low volume here, low volume, low volume, and we start to get under the average volume. So this is the 50 day, you can use the 10 day, but the average volume will tell you if it's good or if it's bad. And if it's, if it's high enough, it can sustain the gap and let us run later. 
but you can see the volume is very, very small underneath the average. And this leads us to come continually down to retest more and more levels. So for the gap and fill scenario, look for this low volume. More importantly, look for the right candles. So let's go through this chart one more time because just looking at the morning candle, the second candle, it would have told me that this gap was going to be filled. So you can see right here, we have a red candle and then an inside candle here with a major wick on the top. So while this candle tried to push, the very next candle rejected, and if we pair that with our other evidence of overbought, we have low volume, we know this is likely to come down. So as we can see, this is a huge, huge red candle, another huge red candle. So these candles are way too big. If there's huge candles, there's not a lot of buyers holding this up, and they're not interested in any of these levels apparently. We can see again, that's an inverted hammer, and then another huge candle. So huge candles are not good for the gap and go scenario. You, you, if you wanna play the gap and fill, they can be very helpful to get that trend lower. And the other thing is small gaps. So if, if you have a tiny gap, less than 50 cents, a dollar, maybe even a dollar 50, those gaps get filled all the time and sometimes they get filled instantly in the first 30 minutes. So the smaller the gap, the higher likelihood chance of it getting filled. And this is what we see on Mara. So this thing only gapped up two bucks. Seems like a lot, but that two bucks pretty much got filled in the first 30 minutes. So again, that first 30 minutes is key. You're gonna get stopped out if you go in too early. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna get burned. But after 30 minutes passes, we get better indication of where the bottoms are, if the stock's gonna hold, if it's gonna run later, or if it's just gonna completely fill the gap and keep falling and falling and falling. The other scenario, so we talked about this earlier, the breakout. So we gap up and we keep going, keep going, keep going. This leads to some tremendous profits and even profits the very next day because the potential gap up scenario. So we see this only happening with these conditions. So building volume, like we saw with Mara, volume just went off a cliff. We did not see volume build into the play throughout the day, and we did not see levels hold. So what we're seeing with, this is gold, GLD, we're seeing a great higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, and what you're seeing is later in the day, volume starts to build, and then gets over the average. So even later in the day, volume is still building into this play. Um, it was kind of lacking in the morning, which would make me nervous being in, but once we see a pick up and the stock is making those higher highs, this confirms the move is gonna be possibly end of day, possibly continuing the next. So that was a great building volume example, but in the first 30 minutes, if you can see that volume build, um, that will be key. But you can also, just from the moving average, see that this is over the average volume line for at least half of the candles, 75% of the candles. And so this is still very strong morning volume. So while it's not great, not continuously over it, most of the candles do pop over the average, which is really helpful. And then it starts happening again later at 9.15. So the other thing is gap and go indications. We need normal readings. So like I showed you with Target, red candles, this is a bad example with gold, but red candles, very low chance of continuation because it's too extended. The statistical likelihood of it moving and moving and moving in that direction is too low. And only if volume backs it up can you beat the readings that are being shown. So if there's no volume, you have red candles, that's where you see the pullbacks, and that's a less likelihood chance of success. Here's the other scenario. We get a gap, readings are normal, and we see this thing at yellow and then orange, and then it starts building into a overbought condition. So that's the best scenario where we build into it. And this typically happens with this smaller gap. So we see this normal reading, yellow candle, and then we rip into the red. And this pulls back finally after that. But we did not open up red, which gave us room to run. And this made it a very healthy continuation rally because of that. And the other thing is, the candles that are being shown in the first three to five minutes, they need to be tiny. Like we showed you with the gap and fill, huge candles mean there's not too much support, 
not too much structure, and not too many buyers interested. If we know the gap's gonna hold and continue, we wanna see tight, tight candles, uh, very small, and then inside candles that keep supporting, keep supporting those key levels. You can see this on that GLD chart, not a huge pullback. We see tight inside candles, dojis, and again here, inside candles, dojis, inside candles, dojis, inside candles, dojis, inside candles, dojis, all day, which tells us keep pushing it higher, keep pushing it higher, and structuring it. So there's a lot of buying at those levels. Then they move on to the next one. And the other major difference between the breakout and the reversal gap is we also wanna see those higher highs come in. So higher highs, higher lows, continuation. What you don't wanna see, the gap in fill is gonna be lower highs. You can see plenty of lower highs here and then plenty of lower lows because that's a downtrend. Uh, the trend is the easiest to understand from literally the highs and the lows you see every single five minutes, 10 minutes. So if you're seeing them consistently not produce a, a trend high or a trend low, you're gonna see that reversal and that's the other indication. So text this number if you want the Monday morning trading watch list. Every Monday I'll send you what I'm looking at inside the markets with our trading group, which you can also try seven days for free with the link below. And lastly, let's talk about options. How do we make big money with these moves? First off, going through the checklist, how do you know where the gap's gonna go? And here's the three factors we talked about. You do have the gap. And what you wanna look for after the gap is your indicators. So is it completely overbought, completely oversold? The indicator will tell you the statistical chance of continuation just based off the readings. The other thing you wanna look for is the volume. If it drops off, if there's huge candles, that means that there's no structure, no buyers interested on the gap up. So low volume is not good. What I also wanna look for is those key levels. If you are right at a key level, the chance of continuing is typically very, very small. You see this happen on Mara. We are right to the key level here, sold off. So if you open up at a profit target, that is something you were looking to get in at or take profit at, that is a place that we don't have a good risk to reward. So we need room to run. I always look at my setups, I say, can I make 100%? Do I have room to run to make 150, 150%? And if I do, I'll look to take the play. If I don't, I won't. And the room to run is very key. Lastly, let's go through the option scenario. We do see target here. So what I always do with my options is if we're scalping, if we're on the morning 15 minute trade, 30 minute trade inside the group, I'm using short-term options. And so if you use a short-term option on a gap and you get an aggressive move, which typically happens with aggressive gaps, uh, you can get those quick 100 percenters in the first three, five minutes of the market open. So again, uh, the weekly options right here, expiring March 4th, I typically like to trade these on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They have the least amount of time on them, so a move in any of my direction can produce even more than 100% very quickly. You do see just a seven pointer in target, moving these options from 350 to 720. So that's 100% for seven bucks on target. And you can see target basically sold off from 227 down to 221. So seven points, boom, 15 minutes, 100%. And again, the key is short-term options. You gotta nail the actual reversal or the breakout and you have to be very, very careful. But again, we take profit along the way. If we're right, we wanna make sure we lock it in slowly. So that's all I got. If you guys wanna watch the previous video on $1,000 a day option trading, check it out in the video to the right of me, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.